All right, now I'm gonna look at part B of this problem. In part B it asks, what was the speed of the block at the moment it touched the spring? So for part A, I picked my zero line to be after the spring had compressed all the way, but since now I'm interested about when it gets to here, I'm gonna call this my new zero line. So this is my zero for part A, this is my zero for part B, and that's okay. You can change the zero line for a different calculation, but you gotta keep it the same for each individual calculation. So for part A, I had to keep the zero line in one place the whole time. Now for part B, I can move it because I'm doing a different calculation. Okay, and so it started a distance D above the spring, and then that'll be where my zero line is. Okay, so let's move down here. So this is gonna be part B. So for part B, I wanna know what was the speed of the block at the moment it touched the spring. This is another place where I can use conservation of mechanical energy, so I'm gonna do that again. So now I need to specify what my initial and final are. I'm gonna say that initial is when the block was at the top of the ramp, just as before. Except now, my final is gonna change. My final now is gonna be when the block touches the spring. Okay, so kinetic energy initial, it started from rest, so I don't have any kinetic energy initial. Potential energy initial, okay, so again, I gotta do that triangle, except now, since my zero line has changed, that's theta right there, my block is up here, this now is a distance d before it touches the spring, and this is the new h I wanna calculate. Okay, so again, this looks like sine, sine of theta is h over d, so h is d sine theta. Okay, so this is m g d sine theta for my initial potential energy. And my final kinetic energy, well it does have a non-zero speed when it touches the spring, so I have a one-half mv squared. The spring is not compressed, so I don't have any elastic potential energy. Oh, that should be a final, not initial. I don't have any elastic potential energy, and I don't have any gravitational potential energy because I changed my zero line, so that when it touched the spring, that's where the zero was. So that goes away. Okay, and now I can solve for V. So V in this case, uh, let's see, I can cancel out an M on each side, so I can get rid of the mass. And then I can make this uh, V equals the square root of 2GD sine theta. And if you need to take a couple steps to do the algebra here, that's fine. Um, but it's probably good practice to see if you can skip a few steps and, and see what the final answer is gonna be and just save you a little bit of time. Now I'm not quite ready to plug in here because I don't know what D is. I know what X plus D is. I remember uh, solved in part A, X plus D was 63.4 centimeters. And I know that X was 12 centimeters, so before I plug in, I should calculate what D is. So D is gonna be 63.4 centimeters minus the 12 centimeters for X. And so that tells me the D is 51.4 centimeters. Okay, now I'm ready to plug in. So V is square root of two times G, which is 9.81 meters per second squared times d, which I just found, that's 0 0.514 meters, and then the sine of 40 degrees, and then the square root of all that. Okay, and so when you calculate this, type it into a calculator, you end up getting 2.55 meters per second. 